What is up today is a very different Eric and Horror Stories. No, I'm not being held captive somewhere. I am in my basement, safe and sound. Today I'm gonna to teach you to make something similar to this, just on a smaller scale. I thought you guys might wanna learn a pretty easy Halloween craft. I'm gonna show you all the things you need to make this and go quickly through how to do it so you can have something cool to decorate with or to scare people with or just if you wanna give head to somebody. Head, a, a head. Construction sounds. La 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 la. Welcome to Eric and Horror Stories, Eric and Craft Stories Edition. Sorry if there's a bit of an echo today. I'm trying to mitigate that as much as possible. Normally, I would craft somewhere else other than in an empty basement, but my house is all full of the stuff that came out of my basement. Um, my basement's where I keep all my crazy Halloween stuff, which is a formidable collection of items, as well as where my photography studio was and all my convention stuff that I keep here that I take on the road with me. Unfortunately, I had an accident with my water heater and it flooded my basement, somehow not ruining anything other than the carpet and the pad under the carpet, so I had to rip all that up. I'm in the process of uh, redoing this crazy room uh, it kind of sucks because I was one of the videos I was going to make was showing you all the stuff down here and just going through how crazy my basement looked and all that stuff, but I <sighs> can't do that right now. Hopefully in the future, obviously, I plan on making this a little nicer than restocking it in a better way and giving you a cool-ass tour, though. For now, though, we're going to do some crafting down here, so let's get started. Okay, so what we're learning today is called corpsing because you're kind of making something look cool and like it was a corpse that came out of the ground or something. I'm gonna go through real quick all the items we're gonna to use today. The base item is a Dollar Tree skull. The coolest thing about this is you don't have to spend a lot on these. We're just gonna use this Dollar Tree skull that costs a dollar. There's our base item. I do have a little bit of craft paint, super cheap at your Walmarts, Michaels, or whatever. Paintbrush for said paint. We won't use much of it, but we do use a little of it and some cheap ass drop cloth. You can probably also get some of this at Dollar Tree. It just needs to be the cheapest stuff and the easiest plastic sheeting you can find is a drop cloth. I do recommend an X-Acto knife with a nice sharp blade. You're gonna need some wood stain or something similar and a brush to put the wood stain on. Interesting, huh? This stuff's interesting. And also a heat gun. These are actually pretty cheap. I have used this thing a ton. This thing is amazing. Also has household applications sometimes. Help me dry up some of the water on the ground here that I needed it to. You may could use a hair dryer that blows really hot, but I don't think they'll necessarily work that well. I highly recommend a heat gun. And before we get started, obviously some of this stuff can be dangerous. I do have to give a regular disclaimer in addition to my usual kind of different disclaimer. You need to be really careful using this stuff. You can seriously burn yourself with a heat gun. I can imagine a scene in a horror movie where somebody just gets a hole just burned way into them with a heat gun. Those things are hot, folks. That's why it's called a heat gun. You probably want to use gloves. I'm not going to, um, just because that's the way I do it, but I highly recommend you do. You're very careful about not having your hand on the item that you're using the heat gun on, although I probably will do that as well. Again, don't do it the way I do it. I am showing you this way because it's how I do it. Also, X-Acto knife, obviously very dangerous, never cut towards you. That's the Boy Scout, hopefully Girl Scout way. Um, cut away from you, be very careful. Don't do it in a way that's gonna make it jerk if uh, you miss or cut through something. Be very careful with this. And everything else, paint varnish, uh, try not to spill that everywhere, or wood varnish, try not to spill that everywhere because it's super messy. And uh, have a good surface to work on. And once you're having something dry, you might want it to dry outside because fumes can be dangerous. Oh, lastly, I forgot a good beer is also a good choice for any crafting project. I'm hiding the label because of my beer sponsor. Actually, I don't have a beer sponsor yet, but I would love to have one. So please, beer companies, sponsor me. Let's go. All right, so here's Mr. Skull. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take an X-Acto knife to him a little bit. Why? Because he looks cool enough like this. The end product would be fine, but I want him to look a little better. I'm gonna cut out the eyes a little bit and the nose holes and some of the teeth, and maybe even put some holes in the skull 
and you will see why that looks neat later. Actually, you already saw on Big Boy there, but when you see the final effect, I think you'll understand why we did a little cutting on this. You can do it different every time, go crazy, cut different teeth out, just cut the mouth open. Don't cut the mouth open. Cut his whole nose off, cut one eye out and not the other. I'm gonna do some cutting on this and then we'll come back for the next step. Fade in. So, Mr. Skull looks a little different now. Cut some holes in him, cut the eyes out. Cut nose holes for him, cut some of his teeth out, cut a slit across the mouth and just kind of pulled the jaw to open that up and cut some random holes overall in the skull. Just a few. When you're doing this, try not to be perfect at all. First of all, it wouldn't look perfect. Just be real jagged with it. Just cut those things out. Don't worry about how it looks. If you cut a little more off than you expected, totally fine. Uh, each one should look kind of different anyway. Don't try to do the same thing over and over again. Go wild, just don't cut your fingers off. All right, now we're ready to put a little paint on him. Why I do this, and it's not gonna be a lot, is any of the areas that are dark will be accentuated under the final uh, product, and it really looks kind of cool. You don't wanna overdo it, but I am gonna black in some of the, uh, the creases in the skull and around the eye holes and stuff. So I'm gonna do that real quick with my craft paint right there and have another sip or two of beer, and we'll be right back. So I did hit Mr. Skull with some craft paint, as you can see, just touched up all around, hit some of the lines, darkened around the eyes and the areas where I made holes or whatnot. It's gonna look really cool in the final product. You may or may not think this looks neat now, but it's gonna look a lot better than this once we uh, get the product finished. Highly recommend using craft paint for this. Uh, if you wanna use oils or really fancy artist paint, I guess that's up to you. Craft paint cleans up really easily. If you get it on your hands, you can wash the brush off easily. All that stuff cleans up great. So, and I really only did the front. You can do all around the skull if you want to, but it's kinda like the Christmas tree, right? And that meme going around that uh, you only really want the front of the Christmas tree to look great, right? But if you wanna do the back too, knock yourself out. Smudge it, do whatever, it's gonna look fine. So we're gonna wrap it with plastic now. I'll go ahead and do that with you. Are you playing along at home? Are you? We are ready to wrap. Boom, ch boom, 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 ch yes, I'm very white, we know this. All right, so one thing I neglected to mention, I did let this paint dry, and by letting it dry, I mean I hit it with the heat gun on low setting. Heat gun is amazing for drying paint. That's actually the reason I bought it before I decided to start doing these crafts. I do custom frames for my convention booth and photography website, and sometimes I do multiple layers of paint on them, and instead of waiting forever, just hit it with the heat gun after each layer, and that sucker is dry, and we can move on like a champion. So we're gonna start wrapping this. We literally are just gonna jam this all over here. Uh, kind of, I, I like to push it in the holes a little. And it'll be bunched up in certain areas that makes a completely different effect than where it's kind of smooth and straighter. You just wanna kind of make sure the whole thing is covered because you can see the cheap plastic uh, pretty easily if you don't. So I'm gonna finish wrapping this and we'll get to the last couple steps. Doesn't it look lovely and perfect? Actually, no, it kind of looks like a mess at this point, but it is covered in the plastic. As you can see, some areas it's a lot thicker than others, very thin layer here, kind of bunched up, one eye's a lot more bunched up. It's gonna look cool when it's finished. We are about to hit this with the heat gun. I do suggest the lower setting. You're gonna be melting the plastic around it with the heat gun. Again, I highly suggest you having this on the ground while you're doing this, not holding it. I may or may not be holding it. I said that earlier, but you're not gonna see this part, so you won't know. Just go all around it, be, too, be careful. This is cheap plastic, it will start to melt. If you have the heat gun on a section too long, you are gonna to wanna to keep moving it around. Melt it to your satisfaction, don't overdo it. Uh, you may still think the end product looks a little weird, but when we put the wood varnish on it and that dries, you're gonna love it. So, heat gun time, we'll be back after I melt this sucker. All right, plastic melted. As you can see, we have this neat mummified look on this sucker now where it's more bunched up, you can tell. Uh, don't get frustrated when you're doing this process, especially when you're learning it. Plastic will pull away unexpectedly. You may have to put more on there. That's exactly what I had to do on this. It didn't do completely right in all the areas. Kind of have to stop and move it around. I do have some exposed areas, but that's cool because we'll see what that looks like at the end. So don't worry about that. Right now, this sucker is wrapped up pretty good. The plastic's tight. We wanna make sure it's not just gonna pull away and rip off when you're done. This is on here pretty good now. So 
we are ready to put some wood varnish on this. And what we're going to do, what I recommend you do, is follow along because I probably need to show you some of this while I'm doing it. Okay, so I did go ahead and put a coat of varnish on this. As you can see, pretty grody looking, right? It's also really dark. I'm going to do something about that in a second. Interestingly enough, I haven't used this wood varnish in a while and it was kind of congealed, so it was kind of weird to put on. Please be careful when putting this varnish on. Don't make a giant mess. You do not want to spill this. So make sure you have something like this piece of cardboard to do this on, something you don't care about. You're going to regret it if you spill it. Try not to get it all over yourself. I would recommend at least wearing, you know, plastic gloves. Don't be like me. I didn't get any on me, but I'm used to doing this. You can buy all kinds of different colors of wood varnish. Um, I chose dark walnut. I like the way that looks. You know, go crazy with what kind you want to use. Now, I did the back of this I didn't do, so I'm able to handle this. I did um, completely coat it. I don't want it to be super dark. I am going to blot this in areas to get some of this off of here just with a paper towel so it's not quite so dark everywhere. Again, just this would not be an even consistency, a mummified corpse, so I'm going to just... Do that a little bit and then that's good. I've rubbed some of it off. It already looks pretty neat, right? We're gonna let it dry and then we'll see the final product. I am, You may, when this is all said and done, the eye holes are kind of covered with plastic a little bit. You may want to cut those out but and, and make it look more open. That's up to you. I'm going to wait until this dries so we'll come back and see the final product of our corpsing. Pretty neat though, huh? Looks worth at least $2 now. Hey, what's up? Uh, moved back up to my regular room to show you the final product here. It's actually been a couple weeks. Uh, I'm just now getting a chance to wrap this up. And it's super cold in the basement, so we're going to do this in here. So anyway, here it is, the final product of our corpsing. Pretty cool, huh? It's a little darker than I would have expected. I believe that's because the wood varnish had sat for so long it had kind of congealed, but... Still really cool. We have this mummified corpsing look, and you can do this on any size things I'd shown you earlier. This thing, which is actually a light that plugs in, very cool. Uh, obviously took a lot more plastic wrap and time, but yeah, you can make all kinds of neat decorations for your house, and this doesn't look quite as cheap as a Dollar Tree skull. Uh, not to hate on Dollar Tree, but when next Halloween rolls around, grab you a few and give this a shot or maybe you have some now even the little skeletons anything really you can make these with uh i bought all kinds of the dollar tree skeleton things the bats the rats the hey it's the new cat just in time and i'll show you a picture now of some of the other things i did i did try to sell some of these at conventions uh they didn't sell really well i was trying to get like five bucks a piece for them but i just didn't sell a lot so i just make them for fun now uh so you know how to make them for fun now too Give Corpsing a shot. Let me know if it works for you. If you thought this was fun, maybe I'll do a few more tutorial kind of things in the future. So, next week, Eric and Horror Stories. I already forgot. Ah, uh, yes. It's Eric and People Profile Stories, as we'll talk about somebody very interesting and maybe forgotten from the world of scary things. And that's next week on Eric and Horror Stories. Bye now. All right, so here's Mr. 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 And cut a couple random holes. A beer. Excuse me. Construction sounds. La 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 la. Construction sounds. La 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 la. <laughs> <laughs>